classification that we will take up is causal systems. And uh, the systems which are not causal are called non causal systems. Okay. So, let us understand uh, conceptually what it means. A causal system is one in which it cannot predict the future. it cannot such a system is called a causal systems uh, in human beings you know there are uh, people who claim to be non causal because uh, they can predict they are called uh, astrologers right and uh, the roots are in the vedas and uh, Vedic astrology. So, it has come to be recognized. However, in electrical engineering system prediction may or may not work and usually all predictions are uh, very positive. So, in electrical engineering system it cannot predict what will come in the future and that is called uh, a causal system. Okay. So, it cannot predict what will come in the future. Okay. So, all physical systems are uh, generally a causal systems. Another name of the causal system is realizable system, physically realizable system. Or also you can call non-anticipative system. So, let us see the definition how we can describe this formally. So, a causal system is one which is defined as follows. Uh, if you have two inputs let us say x 1 of t and uh, this x 1 of t which gives rise to an output y 1 of t and you consider uh, another input x 2 of t which gives rise to uh, y 2 of t. So, I have two inputs and two outputs. Further let us say x 1 of t is equal to x 2 of t for um, let us say t less than some point t naught in the time axis. That means, up to some point t equals t naught both our uh, inputs are the same. So, let us say x 1 of t and this is x 2 of t. Let us say my input is like this and this point is let me call t suffix 0 and this point let me call t suffix 0. Okay, so, see the inputs are identical up to t is equal to t naught. So, here also my input is like this and here also it like this. Let us say this point is 1 volt at t is equal to minus 1 and this point is minus at t equals minus 1 the voltage is 1 volt. When t equals 0 it would be let us say 1.5 volts and this also 1.5 volts when t equals 0. When t equals t naught then it becomes 2 volts and this also 2 volts. Therefore, x 1 of t is equal to x 2 of t up to time t naught. Afterwards, uh, my input is going like this for x 1 of t and this guy is going down. Up to time t naught they are friends, they are like each other. Okay. Afterwards, they are going you know differently, that is what we mean. Okay. So, up to some point let us say t equals t naught this point 
the inputs are the same so you may have x1 of t up to point t1 and afterwards it may goes uh, like this and uh, x and x2 of t deviates from that point onwards like this therefore for a causal system we can expect that uh, y1 of t because inputs are same right therefore this y1 of t and y2 of t are expected to be the same y1 of t expected to be the same y2 of t up to the time t less than t not because inputs are same up to this time interval t not so the corresponding output is let us say let us draw the output for this guy let's say my output is uh, mm, like this and uh, here also the output is like that okay so this point t not and this is t this is t y1 of t y2 of t then this is minus 1 at minus 1 let's say you have 2 volts and this also producing 2 volts same system and this is 1.5 volts and this is 1 volt and this is 1.5 volts and this is 1 volts so up to time t naught both the outputs expected to be the same this is same as this one so both are same because up to t naught the inputs are same therefore it is giving same kind of output okay if y1 of t had uh, some output like this then uh, like this up to you know let's say this point is t naught up to t naught and afterwards it may go like this let's say it is going like this like this we don't know depends on the system we can say that y2 of t also will have the same response um, from this point to, to this point once it reaches this point then it may not be the same ok so it may go like this we don't know how it goes and this one is different from this one let's say this is a and this is b after t naught or t in greater than t naught the responses are not the same ok so such a systems are said to be causal systems this is the general definition of a causal system in particular now if you now in particular now for uh, linear causal systems the system is not only causal but also linear okay you consider a system now the system is not only causal but also linear linear means what did i say you take two inputs then like we know the formula we know the you know definition for linearity if x1 of t gives rise to y1 of t x2 of t gives rise to y2 of t then linear combination of these two guys a times x1 of t plus b times x2 of t gives rise to a times y1 of t plus b times y2 of t now for simplicity let us assume a is equal to 1 and b is equal to minus 1 now what will happen x1 of t minus x2 of t is equal to y1 of t minus y2 of t ok so now we said uh, x1 of t is equal to x2 of t up to the point t less than t naught right so therefore what happens this quantity this quantity is going to be what 0 
if time t is less than 0. Similarly, the output also is going to be 0 if uh, t is less than t naught. Okay, so x1 of t minus, so please remember how I got this uh, x1 of t minus x2 of t, I am okay, I am using the linearity principle here where uh, the scaling coefficients are taken as uh, 1 and minus 1, so this is minus 1. So, x1 of t minus x2 of t is equal to 0 for t less than t suffix 0 and then the corresponding outputs y1 of t minus y2 of t is equal to 0 for t less than t naught. So, this t naught can be any arbitrary value, okay. it can be 2 or it can be 3 or it can be 0 or it can be minus 1, whatever it is, it, it can take any value. Okay. So, now as a general case, um, let us take t naught is equal to 0. Okay. As a general case, we can say if uh, x of t is 0 for t less than 0, that means x1 of t minus x2 of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0, then y1 of t minus y2 of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0. Let us say this x1 of t minus x, x2 of t is equal to x of t. Similarly, this let me call y of t. Okay. Therefore, if x of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0, then y of t is also equal to 0 for t less than 0. So, that is the consequence of linear causal system. So, what do we mean by that? If there is no input, then there is no output, that is it. That is what we expect. So, the system cannot give any output on its own. So, uh, for example, when we always talk about system, system means what? We can be a filter, band pass filter, low pass filter, band stop filter. It can be an amplifier, right? So, if you design an amplifier, the input is a very weak signal and output is an amplified signal. So, if, if there is no input, it should not, uh, the amplifier should not give any output, right? If it gives on its own, then that amplifier we do not want whatever you have the signal that signal should be amplified like you take uh, speech signal or music signal or um, video signal or whatever it is. If the input is 0 naturally we expect the system output to be 0. If, we, if it is giving something else then it is totally unreliable and uh, you know very bad system that is. <coughs> okay. So, that means whenever uh, input you have if it is 0 then the output also must be 0. That means, before you apply the input, you cannot get an output, which seems to be quite reasonable for our physical argument. Therefore, uh, we believe that all physical systems follows this uh, causality principle. Causality principle. Okay. The system which follows causality principle, that system is called a causal system. And the system which is not causal is referred to as non-causal or anticipatory system. Non-causal or anticipatory system, it expects something in the, from the future. Okay. Uh, we believe as I said that all physical systems that we can build follow the principle of uh, causality. Uh, very often one describes a causality principle okay, um, in this term like this, let us say equation 1 in these terms, but uh, that is not quite correct uh, in the sense if I have a system you know like this, 
let me consider one system i put a battery here let's say 2 volt and uh, the input is i am applying here plus and minus vi okay so this is my system now right so vi is the input and i is a response let's say i is a response vi and i is equal to output response of the system so now this definition fails in the circuit diagram okay how if uh, vi is the input and i is the response even if vi is zero vi is zero vi is zero means what you are short circuiting the input so your system be your circuit becomes like this now because of the internal two voltage source that is i i is not equal to zero i is equal to 2 by that value of the resistance r okay therefore we cannot say that this particular system follow this definition x of t is the input which is vi here this one vi current is the output it is denoted here so i will exist even if uh, the input is zero therefore you cannot uh, you know start a signal vi of t from t equal to 0 onwards it doesn't mean that current will be it doesn't mean that the current will be zero because the current will be driven by the battery this battery this battery current will be driven by the battery even if the input is zero the input is zero here but uh, this is a this is not a linear system by the way non linear system because the linearity will be destroyed because of this independent source 2 volt okay because of the presence of the source you don't have a proportional relation between vi and i so this is not a linear system okay so the system part is linear but the source destroys the linearity because r is a linear device we studied already in the previous lecture but that linearity will be destroyed by the independent source therefore uh, this kind of uh, you know this kind of definition is not valid it will not always work out to test the causality okay so instead of that we always look at this definition so this definition is always good to check the causality <coughs> okay so this will be you know valid for the system to check whether the system is causal or not so this one is a more general definition more general definition if the input is zero for time t less than zero the output is output will likewise be 0 for time t less than 0 ok that is all about uh, the causality for continuous time system now let us talk about causality for uh, discrete time system causal and uh, non causal or let me write down like this causal and non causal discrete time system within a bracket fine mm. so again for the discrete time system the definition is similar to the definition what we had for a continuous time system so the definition goes as follows like formally the output y of n So formally the output y of n depends on the present input 
x of n at that particular time instant or it may depends on the past input also x of n minus 1, x of n minus 2 and so on so forth. In general we will write x of n minus some integer n naught <coughs> where n naught is positive and also it depends on the past outputs y of n minus 1 or y of n minus 2 and so on so forth. Such a systems are called a causal systems. Suppose uh, you know y of n depends on y of n plus 1 sorry x of n plus 1. x of n plus 1. When I say time t, when when I say n equal to present time, now what is the time? Let us say 12 o'clock, 4 minutes. Now, the present output depends on the future input. What is the future input here? 12.04 plus 1, 12.12 12 o'clock, 5 minutes. At 12 o'clock, 4 minutes, how do I know what will come in the future at 12 o'clock, 5 minutes? I do not know. Okay. So, such systems are called non-causal systems non-causal systems. But uh, let us say if my present output y of n that is now time is 12 o'clock 4 minutes now in my clock. Now, this guy depends on x of n the present uh, input uh, 12 o'clock 0 4 minutes then x of n minus uh, 4 that means at exactly at 12 o'clock 12.04 minus 0 0.04. So, 12 o'clock because 12 o'clock it is a past, I know what happened in the past. So, no problem for me, I can take it through memory. Then let us say y of n minus 2, that means I need the output to find the present output, I need to know what is the past output at uh, 12 o'clock 0 0.04 minus 0 0.2, then this is 12.2 minutes. So, this value also I know, no problem and this was val value also I have. So, this all this value also I have now. So, present input I know at present what is happening. For example, when I say x of n, let us take a microphone. Okay, at every instant it is giving output. So, therefore, the present output depends on the present input or past input or past outputs. Such systems are called a causal systems. Okay, but in this case, y of n depends on x of n plus 1. That means, the system at the present moment predicts what will come on a sample later. Okay. So, no that is not permitted in any real systems. So, we do not have a physical device which can advance time. Okay. You can only delay, there is no advancement. Okay. So, the formal definition is now in terms of you know like a formal mathematical language what we uh, defined for continuous time, it says that a digital system is causal causal if and only if if and only if x 1 of n is identically equal to x 2 of n for let us say n less than or less than some time instant let us say n naught which implies y of y 1 of n will also be identically equal to y 2 of n same definition what we did for the uh, continuous time case. So, as long as if x 1 of x 1 of n is identically equal to x 2 of n for less than some integer n naught, it implies if two inputs are identical up to certain integer value of n naught, then the output during this interval must also be identical for n less than n naught that is the formal definition mathematical definition. So, what does it mean? We already 
now I explained this. It means that if uh, small n exceeds n naught, then x 1 of n and uh, x 2 of n may be different, they are not same. Okay. Then y 1 of n and y 2 of n also expected to be different because the input is not the same, this therefore the output also not the same. So, as long as the two inputs are identical, what comes in the future for x 1 of n and x 2 of n is not anticipated by the system. So, this is the formal definition and uh, this is the interpretation. Now, let us take some example in this case very simple example, some couple of examples, okay. see whether the system is causal or uh, non causal. Suppose you have a system y of n which is equal to, why is it not writing, yeah, y of n is equal to x of n squared. Now, the question is, is this a causal system? Okay. So, the answer is no. Why? It is non-causal. Why? Suppose put, a, if you put y n equal to 1, no problem. y of n 1 is equal to x of 1. So, no issues. But the moment if you put n equal n, n is equal to 2, then the present output to, at n equal to 2, it depends on x of 2 square becomes 4. Okay. So, x of 4 is yet to come, it is a future, therefore, this is non-causal. Okay. Let us say time is uh, now 12 o'clock 09. Let us remove this is 12 and let us say 0 0.09 minutes now. Okay. So, the output at 0 0.9 minutes is equal to at uh, 0 0.9 the whole square that means it is 81, 81 means if you take modulus of 60 then it is 21. So, it depends on 1 o'clock 21 minutes. Twenty-one minutes. The present output depends on the input which is yet to come in the future after 1 hour, okay, more than 1 hour, like 1 hour uh, um, 12 minutes. Okay. So, the present output depends on the input which is yet to come after 1 hour uh, 12 minutes. See, now time is 12 o'clock 09 minutes, but it depends on 1 o'clock 21 minutes. So, the difference is 1 hour 21 minus 9, 12. So, 1 hour 12 minutes. So, such a system is non-causal systems. Let me take another example. Uh, that example is, let us say, y of n is equal to x of n. This is a noise due to the aircraft x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n plus 1 and divided by 3. And this system it has a special name called moving average system. So, you will study very in detail in digital signal processing. Let us now only discuss moving average system, why it is called moving average that we will study later. Let us say you have the samples like this, at any point you are taking the average of the previous sample and the next sample that, that is why it is called moving average. When n equal to 0, you take the average of minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 by 3. At n equal to 1, you take the average of 0 plus 1 plus 2 by 3 and uh, let us say this is 2 and for this point n is equal to 2, then you take the average of 1 plus 2 plus 3 by 2. That is why this is called the average is moving. As time progress, the average also moving. When n equal to 0, then y of 0 is equal to x of minus 1 plus x of 0 plus x of 1 by 3. When n equals 1, then y of 1 is equal to x of uh, 0 plus x of 1 plus x of 2 by 3, right. Then when n equals 2, then y of 2 is equal to x of 1 plus x of 2 plus 
x of 3 by 3. So, therefore, the average is moving as n is moving that is why this is called a moving average system ok that is let us keep it aside that is not the business for us now in this section at least. Now, let us check whether it is causal uh, causal or non causal ok. So, obviously this is also non causal because y of n depends on x of n plus 1 here look at here x of n plus 1, but then if ok that is uh, you know anticipating what is going to occur in the future. Now, one can ask a very good question like um, all physical systems are you know causal systems and moreover the non causal systems cannot be realized. Therefore, if we cannot realize a non causal system like that is uh, like all our systems are causal then why are we talking of it? Why are we making distinction like we are doing the classification like a, you know causal systems and non causal systems? What is the use? So, the distinction arises because non causal signal processing ok please understand this very carefully ok this non causal signal processing is possible from the recorded data. recorded data if you say have some recorded data they can then you can predict what is going to happen in the future like weather forecast then uh, you know temperature uh, forecast and when the rain will come monsoon forecast this all are done with the help of recorded data. So, like uh, for example, the geophysicist uh, you know he goes to the field and records by seismograph that is the variations right. So, it records the vibrations, he gets back to the laboratory and then analyzes it. Now, when you are uh, analyzing a particular output y of n, he knows what is going to come because it is a recorded data. So, on recorded information non causal signal processing is possible ok and in geophysics in particular also in weather prediction non causal processing is possible, but you cannot realize this in a hardware only software it is possible. Software you have non causal system, because the software works on the recorded data here we are using recorded data, but in the hardware when I say hardware using you know resistor, capacitor, inductor then some active devices like a diodes or transistors or whatever it is you cannot have non causal system you will have only causal system. So, here for software causal system is possible and in this one sorry here non causal system is possible in the hardware causal system is possible, but non causal system is not possible in the hardware. So, this is software is basically a data processing. So, when I say non causal then it basically it is data processing. So, hardware realizations have always to be causal you cannot anticipate what is going to come in the future. Now, let us talk about causal signals and non causal signals. So, this is also part of uh, our uh, discussion. Okay, like um, all signals then in nature are causal signals, yes. Okay, formally a signal x of n is causal if, if uh, x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 that is the definition. So, you have to start the signal somewhere. So, let us call it uh, you know n equal to 0. For example, I started the lecture around 1140. So, for me n is equal to 1140 is a 0th, 0th point because I started my process at that point. 
suppose if I start to record my lecture at this time then 12 o'clock 8 minutes is the reference point that reference point is always considered to be the 0th time n equal to 0 therefore the signal is causal but then if you have values like it does not mean that I do not have the signal I may have from the recorded data sometimes you may have x minus 1 that means you may have the data at uh, 12 o'clock 7 minutes 12 o'clock 6 minutes 12 o'clock um, 5 minutes like that and so on so forth so this is non causal signal if you consider this also then it becomes non causal if you consider right from 12 o'clock 8 minutes onwards then it is causal then if you consider this guy also with that then it becomes non causal so signals can be non causal it does not mean that uh, you know, like we said uh, uh, all physical systems are you know causal systems but it does not mean that uh, all signals must be causal you can have non causal signals also you start your processing at n equal to 0 but you know the initial value also x of minus 1 or x of minus 2 and so so these all are this is x of minus 1 this is x of minus 2 this is x of minus 3 this one because yeah, this is 0 n equal to 0 for me 12 o'clock 8 minutes so if you combine x of minus 1 x of minus 2 um, <coughs> x of minus 1 x of I am sorry this is 1 2 yeah this one is 2 x of minus 2 x of minus 1 x of minus 3 with uh, n equal to 0 x of 0 x of n then you will get a non causal signal also so practically we have uh, we may have non causal signals and causal signals but uh, the physically realizable systems are causal systems causal systems cannot predict what will happen in the future but if you have recorded data of course yes it is possible to predict and if a signal which has an which has uh, some initial value you start your processing whatever time you start okay you call that n equal to 0 n equal to 0 n equal to 0 is arbitrary ok so for me n equal to 0 is n equal to 0 here 12 o'clock 8 minutes somebody will uh, you know start his work uh, at 12 o'clock 20 minutes for him this 12 o'clock 20 minutes is n equal n equal to 0 it's all depends on at what time you are starting your work so wherever you start uh, your processing we call it n equals 0 and a signal is causal if x of n equal to 0 that means when you start your process that time you are not considering the signal which exists before that that is all so some more uh, examples I would like to give, uh, give in this regard you take RC circuit source plus and minus Vs put a resistor capacitor like this and this circuit is causal this system is causal system why since the capacitor voltage responds only to the present vc response or gives output okay mm, response only to the present and past values of input past values of the source voltage by the way this is the source voltage V suffix S that S indicates source and V indicates voltage source voltage ok and uh, since it does not anticipate uh, future actions then it is a causal system ok now let me take one more example let us say y of n is equal to summation of k is equal to minus infinity to n x of n not x of n x of k because uh, the variable is k no put k here now the question is is this causal you can check very easily like uh, you have a signal it starts from minus infinity and it keep on goes let us say this is my 0 now 1 2 3 4 like this let us say this is uh, these are the values like that some orbital I am drawing the figures here 
like that it is there now as per the equation what is your uh, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 like this what is your uh, let's say put n equal to 0 y of 0 y of 0 equal to k is equal to minus infinity to the upper limit is 0 because there is n here then x of k that means what you are adding all the values up to the present time what is the present time now n equal 0 so it is equal to x of minus infinity plus dot 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 plus x of minus 2 plus x of minus 3 plus uh, no 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 x of minus 1 <coughs> x of minus 1 plus x of 0 you stop at x of 0 because the variable running variable is here 0 therefore at n equals to 0 my output depends only on the all the past input and this is my present input because n equal to 0 this is my present value present input and this all are past input similarly if you take a y equal to sorry n equals 2 or 3 or whatever it is let me take 2 then y of 2 is again x of minus infinity plus dot 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 plus x of minus 2 plus x of minus 1 plus x of 0 let me write down here x of 0 plus x of uh, 1 plus x of 2 ok now look at here this all are past values up to x of n and this is my present value ok so therefore the present value output n equals 2 this is my present time now that is equal to the past values and the present value therefore the accumulator or also this is also called a summer summer or accumulator is called a yeah, causal system ok now let me take one more example let us say y of n is equal to simply one delay x of n minus 1 the present output depends on the one delayed version of the input uh, present input so this also obviously causal no future uh, dependency now y of t is equal to 1 over c integral of i of tau times d tau by the way what is this equation this equation will give you the voltage stored in the capacitor how much voltage it is storing 1 over c again this equation also causal system ok now one more note I want to put here all memoryless systems are causal because the output responds only to the current value of the input see memoryless means it does not you know it does not have any memory that means it does not know what happened in the past you take the resistor the moment you cut the power it does not know what happened in the past again it starts its life as if it um, you know come to this world that instant of time ok so all memoryless systems are causal systems since the output responds only to the current value of the input let, now let me take some more examples like uh, let us say y of n is equal to x of n minus x of n plus 1 again if you look at it depends on the future value therefore this is non causal and then y of t let us say x of t plus 1 again this also non causal so <coughs> that is all about the causality of the system for both uh, the continuous time systems and the discrete time systems so let me stop at this point thank you very much